and welcome to the Riverside Studios here in Cologne. This is Mux TV, and we have another wonderful concert for you tonight. Not only you at home, but also you here in the studio. And I must say, when I was getting ready for tonight, um, I didn't know what to wear, because I didn't want to wear kind of like a pretty dress. I wanted to wear something kind of cool for these cool guys. And when I walked out the door, my son, who's almost a teenager, said, Mom, you look swag. So I think I'm doing all right, but I did have to check online if the word swag was offensive, but it's not. So I can say I'm standing in front of the swag band and I'm so glad you guys are here and I'm so glad you're here at home too watching to listen to the Groove Blue Organ Trio with Steve Smith, with Vinny Valentino and with Tony Monica. Thank you so much for being here today and enjoy the evening. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
took my shovel and I walked to the mine I don't get 16 tons and a number nine cold And the straw boss said, well, bless my soul Another day old and deep in that same big old thing as I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Step aside A lot of men didn't And a lot of them died Company store. Thank you, Dave Valentino on the guitar and vocals. Three, Tony Bonaco. <laughs> My name is Steve Smith. It's a great pleasure to be here in Cologne, Germany, performing at Riverside Studios. And thank you all for coming out. And thank you all for checking this out online on the internet. We appreciate you listening and watching what we're doing here tonight. Uh, giving you uh, a concert. We are on currently on tour of Europe and um, just happen to have a beautiful stop over here in Cologne. So thank you all for checking us out tonight. Uh, we just started out with a, a few tunes from actually some all brand new tunes. So these are all new arrangements as in that tune we just did 16 tons or some uh, brand new tunes. The first uh, piece we played was called Broken Promises, written by Vinny. And then we, we did a tune that Tony brought to us that's called Cars, Trucks, Buses. And uh, we're going to do a tune from our Groove Blue album. And this is something that Vinny wrote uh, for the album. It's actually the first track on the CD. And uh, it's a feature for the brushes, so it's called The Brush Off.
Well, we have one more piece of music to play for you before we take a short intermission. So once again, Tony Monaco on the Hammond B3. On the guitar, Vinny Valentino. And Steve Smith on the drums.
everybody say yeah. on yet that was so much fun and so great and I said before they are swag they're not only swag they're awesome they're amazing magni magnificent wonderful and any other adjective you can think of right now and I got to, uh, I had the pleasure to talk to them before the concert and at the end of the interview Tony looked around and said you know what I love you two guys so that's the love that they have on the stage you can feel it when they're playing and you get to hear them in a couple more minutes you get to hear them at home too after you listen to the interview and I hope you're having a good time so see you all in a couple of minutes thank you so much Thank you so much. <laughs> That has been some wonderful music we just listened to here at the Riverside Studios and uh, all of you around the world have the pleasure of listening to me asking some questions that I hope uh, the three of you are going to answer. Um, I really had trouble trying to pick out all the stuff to ask you because you've done so many things. Um, but I do want to talk about the, the Groove Blue organ trio and I tried really hard to say that without messing up. Um, you guys didn't meet in New York City or in LA. Um, well, you did maybe, but you didn't meet Tony. Um, uh, you met him in Jakarta in, at the Java, um, well, not at the festival, but you played at the Jazz, uh, Jazz Festival and uh, met him in the evening at a little club. Is that right, Vinny? Maybe, or maybe Vinny can tell me well, how that was when you walked in the door and heard him playing his soul out. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting because Tony and I actually do go back a little ways. And, and I had told Steve about Tony. I said, we should do a an organ trio record and and then we ended up at the jakarta jazz festival and uh tony was holding court in the at the jam session in the center of the hotel where all the musicians congregate after they finish their sets and so of course steve and i went there to hang out and, and there was george benson and there was roy hargrove just to name a, a few and george duke was there and joey DeFrancesco and um uh, so at some point in time we all played and and um when when we played together it, we said yeah that's we got to do this and just to, to quickly ask george benson was one of the reasons why you wanted to become a musician right or he at least um made you yeah be interested in music a lot more right absolutely i i started to study and learn more about jazz because i heard george benson play when i was 16 years old so we'll get back to that in a minute. But um, playing in Jakarta didn't really end up you really recording a, an album. It all started, well, it went, it, it carried on in Cleveland, Ohio, or in Columbus, right? How did that uh, come about? Talk about maybe you, you live in Columbus, or you're from Columbus, and then they came and visited you ap after they were playing in Cleveland. But you can tell it better than I can. <laughs> Thank you. I was, um, I live in Columbus, Ohio. And Steve and Vinny were doing uh, a drum fantasy camp in Cleveland. And that was when Vinny and Steve contacted me and said, hey, we're going to be close. So I said, well, come on over because I have a studio in my home. And so we recorded the first Groove Blue re uh, record inside the studio. And that became the, the release that uh, we have now. Um, but the interesting thing about that release is the whole thing that really inspired it was this funky version of Cherokee and Roy Hargrove playing the trumpet and we were just cooking and that's what I think started the real groove blue. You guys really do a groove, absolutely. Um, you have uh, some, you've been doing so many things in your life. You, you play with Journey, obviously, um, still. But I do want to talk about, you just talked about George Benson and um, who decided or who changed your mind from the accordion to playing uh, the Hammond organ? Who was that? It was actually me because somebody <laughs> was, uh, some, when I was 12 years old, somebody gave me a Jimmy Smith album. And I was playing the accordion at the time. And it was at that time that when I heard the sound of the Hammond B3 that I had to go after it. And I haven't never left the organ since then. So out of the 51 years that I've played music so far, 47 of them have been on the Hammond B3. Did your parents ever think that um, Benny, playing Benny Goodman for you would uh, change your life in a way that it did or, or lead you to the, the, on the path that it took you? No, they were just listening to some music that they enjoyed. And then, uh, of course, the drummer with Benny Goodman in the 30s was Gene Krupa. And, and when I heard Gene Krupa, and especially playing his drum solo in Sing, 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 that really spoke to me. And that, but a combination of that and 
um, hearing marching bands during the parades. I really loved the sound of the snare drum and the bass drum and, and how it felt when I was just a little kid watching like a 4th of July parade in the U.S. And uh, so I decided in the fourth grade, there was an assembly where somebody from a local music store came and demonstrated a bunch of instruments and they said, and you can you can pick one, and I decided I wanted to play the drums. But at that time, what I didn't realize, it really wasn't playing the drums, it was playing a practice pad. <laughs> so I did start my lessons, but it was like about two years on the practice pad, and then one year on the snare drum before I graduated to a complete drum set. And uh, in 85, when you, um, I guess you can say, when you were asked to, to leave Journey, um, you had to leave bec also because of the technique that we had that it was changing um, and the way the drums were evolving. Um, I'd like to ask you two, on your instruments, what do you think in the last 20, 30 years has changed on your instrument? I don't know on yours, um, but ha that has changed music and has made it maybe a bit more difficult or challenging for you. Well, I think YouTube has really changed music Uh, in a lot of ways because kids that are learning music today have access to pretty much everything. Um, when I wanted to listen to John Coltrane or Miles Davis, I had to go buy the record or I had to ask a friend of mine, you know, if they had the record or something like that. And, uh, you know, when I went to go buy George Benson records, I would buy every record that was in the bin at the time. But that wasn't much. That was Breezin and maybe a couple of old records. Now you can go on YouTube and you can find everything that he's done there. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest change is the access to it. But I also think that that breeds mediocrity. You don't find people that really understand the concept of deliberate practice and how to get to the next level. I, I find a lot of people that have, you know, gotten to a certain point, but getting to the, the, the next level is really uh, something that I find to be a uh, little less than, it's not, not always there anyway. Yeah, speaking of which, you you um, play or you practice three to four hours, six days a week. Is that still true? Because I read an interview that is probably a couple of years old. Do you still do that or is that changed? Uh, I still practice pretty much every day. Like, you know, like I'll take a day off. But I do put in a couple of hours at least every day uh, to continue to develop and work on new ideas. And But what I, I just to add to what, Vinny is saying about um, YouTube and there's a lot of access to people seeing music performed like, you know, in a, in a video or even like what we're doing here today. What there is un less of, unfortunately, are the opportunities to see musicians play live. And, and even if there is an opportunity... Uh, people are seem to be less apt to go out and hear music because not only did Vinny want to buy those George Benson records, but you wanted to see him in person and, and experience what that is like to be in the room with one of your favorite musicians. And that is, was life-changing for me when I was in the room with Buddy Rich and heard him play and felt that experience, that visceral experience of being in the room with Tony Williams or Elvin Jones or Billy Cobham and all the drummers that I grew up really loving. There's, there's whatever I can see in a video doesn't even come close to what it feels like to be in the room. Yeah, it seems like, especially young people today, think it's more important to show where you've been than to experience the moment. You know, they take pictures of the concert and they film the concert, but they don't just put their phone down and listen to what's happening. What about your experiences concerning the development of music and, and especially on your instrument? Well, I think the organ, much like the drums, needs to be looked at as a total instrument. See, when you play piano or you play guitar or you play horn, you're playing some part of the music. But when you're playing the organ, you're, you have to incorporate all of it to play the bass, And so for me, I have to practice a lot in keeping that muscle memory coordination. 
and exactly what's been said already you know i wish when i was a child i could go look up my mentors jimmy smith and watch him play live you know so i'm still learning today the stuff that i couldn't learn the first time because now i can kind of see how he did it so for me the organ's a lifelong study and it can do anything from luscious ballads to big band swing to hot funk you know the organ's a hip instrument Speaking about all those different kinds of genres, what, uh, how did you put the set list together for tonight? What was, what was important? Well, we, we try to incorporate, incorporate all the uh, influences that we have as musicians. And so we all equally, you know, put in time in the writing and the arranging and the production side of it. And that's really how the set list is put together. Um, and it's... You know, Steve takes a lot of care in making sure that it's fun from beginning to end and it has a flow. And that's for you uh, or for the audience? <laughs> I think for the audience because he tweaks it a little bit every night based on what the audience is hearing and based on, you know, what's happening around us. Steve, you can speak to that a little bit more. Sorry, I'm grabbing the microphone away. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we have an album called Groove Blue and we play a lot of the music from that album, but we're also working on new, new music. And so we're, it's the set that we're playing is a mixture of some of the new songs, compositions by Tony and Vinny and, and arrangements of songs that we, we've worked out. So it's that you're getting a mix of the, the original Groove Blue record and then some new music that we'll be recording. When you're a musician who's been on the road a lot of their life, um, who's worked with a lot of people and um, has played music almost every day of their life, does it ever, does there ever come a day when you think, oh my goodness, you know what, I just, I just want to stay home today and I just want to, I don't want to go out and play tonight or, and does that change when you're on stage or are there really evenings where you think, oh, man, you know, today I really don't want to be here. Does that happen? <laughs> It, it definitely does happen. And, but part, see, part of the daily practice routine is this, kind, this preparation for even if you don't feel like doing it, you're, you rise to the occasion because your chops are, you know, you're, they're always there. And, and once you get in front of the audience, then a shift happens. And then you're glad to be there. But there's definitely ups and downs and days that I feel like I just want a day off. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, did research, obviously, before I did this, or hopefully it's obvious, before I did this interview, and I couldn't think of any really good hem players or, or um, any really good guitar players that I know personally, but I do know somebody um, who you might know, Jeff Hamilton, and I, I talked to him, and I said, come on, give me a story about Steve, and he said, yeah, I'm not going to give you a story, but I'm going to give you a little hint. Ask him about when we met in Scottsdale, Arizona. He said uh, something funny, happy. I'm not sure. Maybe you know what he's talking about. Well, there's, there's, a, there's probably a few stories from those days. But this was, I think it was either 79 or 80. So I was playing with Journey, and I had this big double bass drum set. And, well, Jeff Hamilton is one of my favorite musicians, and he's a fantastic uh drummer and his specialty in a way is playing the brushes and so we would we spent time uh we were doing drum clinics for a drum shop in in scottsdale and we were staying at the guy's house that owned the drum shop so we'd stay up at night and and he showed me a lot of brushes stuff so i think the next day we did a, this clinic and he had his little jazz kit that was looks more like this one here, this kit that I'm playing today. And then I had my big double bass kit. And in the middle of the clinic, we just got up and switched kits, which at that time, that was pretty funny. The main, it was funny to see Jeff Hamilton <laughs> on my double bass rock and roll kit. And he played the hell out of it. <laughs> Well, I know you guys are going to play the hell out of it because we already heard you in the first set um, playing the hell out of it. Um, when you guys are together, I mean, you seem like you just get along really well. Um, and how do you keep it fresh on an evening like tonight? What do you do? You have like a, a ritual that you do before you go on stage? Something you do after after the the concert? Well, uh, for me, I like to warm up. I like to make sure that I have my facility there, and uh, and then we talk about the set. Maybe we'll run down the first tune. We just get, you know, we just 
try to do what we do and and every night's a, a new night as far as the audience goes and and a new night as far as the sound goes and and we just uh go with the flow and and do what we can there's a lot of improvisation that happens every night as well so we like to surprise each other that way what about you tony what are you going to do the rest of the night um in the second half <laughs> Actually, I'm already starting to go there. There's a process for me of crossing over being in the this moment to being in the music's moment. And the respect that I have and the trust that we all have is, I think, the reason why this band gets along because we all respect each other first. And so when each person is playing, we all do our best to support that person. That's what a band is. And this is a real band. And I love you, Steve. I love you, Vinny. A real band uh, with real hearts because real good people play good music. At least that's what I think. So um, thank you very much for talking to me. Um, I could have talked to each one of you for at least 15 minutes. And I mean, we'd, we could go on for hours. So we only touched, touched, the, touched the surface. But you can find out lots about all three of them and uh, together or apart on online and social media everywhere. And you should just sit down. Don't move. Relax and enjoy the rest of the concert here at the Riverside Studios. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> And we're back here on Mux TV, Riverside Studios in Cologne, and um, <laughs> it's sold out here too. So it's sold out at home. You're, you're, you don't have to buy any tickets. You could just lean back and enjoy yourself on this wonderful evening with these wonderful musicians. And um, you got to listen to them talk about how they got together, what inspires them, and all that kind of stuff. Now you can just lean back and listen to what inspires them musically with the n next set that they're playing here tonight. So I'd like to welcome you here or at home and here in the studio and welcome all three of you again. And just, I'm gonna leave and stop talking because they wanna listen to you. So lots of fun playing the music and enjoy. Goodbye. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Hey, thank you everybody for coming. Everybody say yeah! yeah. For, we could do a little bit better, huh? Everybody say yeah! yeah. Now the world can hear us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Smith. <laughs> Vinnie Valentino. You heard in the interview that I said that I truly love them, and I do, because in order for the music to feel good, we have to have love among us in the music. This next song that I would like to uh, perform is a song on my new disc called The Definition of Insanity, and it's here tonight. And the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing again and again and expect different results. <laughs> so you can guess what the record's about, huh? I have a student in Turkey online, and uh, we started studying Turkish music. And I started to hear this one particular harmony, and I looked up the scales, and I found this one Turkish scale called the Nawa Athar. Basically, it's an altered scale for an altered chord. So this song is built around the Awa Athar, and it's called Awa Athar.
This next song uh, is also on my new CD, The Definition of Insanity, and I'd like to sing this for you. It's called The Song for You. <laughs> I've been so many places in my life and time. I sung a lot of songs. I made some bad rhymes. I've acted out my life in stages with 
10,000 people watching Now we're alone And I'm singing a song for you I know your image of me is what I hope to be. I treated you unkindly, but darling, can't you see? There's no one more important to me, baby, see through me. Now we're alone. And I'm singing a song for you You taught me precious secrets And the truth without holding nothing You came out in front Cause I was hiding And now my life's so much better if my world don't come together Listen to my melody My love's in there hiding I love you in a place where There's no space or time I love you for my life you're all my friends of mine And when my life is over Remember we were together Now we're all alone And I'm singing a song for you
Thank you. Tony Monaco.
Tony Monaco on the Hammond B3. And on the guitar, Vinny Valentino. And on the drum, Steve Smith. Thank you. Well, we have one last arrangement for you, and uh, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you very much for being here in the studio, and um, hope to see you again sometime next year. We'll be back. All right, everyone, one last tune.
Thank you, thank you so much. And they said they didn't want to do, or they weren't too sure about the encore. Do you guys want to hear another song? Ha ha ha, a little a short one. Play something that you played at the beginning. I put them on the spot, I'm sorry about that, but I had to do it for you and for you at home. <laughs> you can do it, I know you can. I'm, yeah, you can, they can. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Steve Smith, thank you so much. It has been a wonderful evening, and I'm so sorry for putting you on the spot, but it was worth it for all of us. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, everyone at home. I'd like to thank uh, KB2 Audio and Triad Orbit for helping us and making the sound so beautiful. I'd like to thank the Riverside Studios for having us, for, for Muxifel for letting the whole world be part of this wonderful music. And again, thank you three so much for the wonderful music, for bringing all this love into this room. It's so much fun to listen to you. You can see you guys have so much fun. We wish you all the luck for the rest of the tour. And uh, we wish all of you a wonderful evening and at home as well. And if you want to watch it again, go ahead and watch it on Muxifel as often as you want. Have a lovely evening and see you very soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.